So I want to know today, do O2 sensor spacers really work? Okay, here is the section one of my exhaust that I'm working with. It is aftermarket, obviously. I do not know what brand this is, but it has some high flow cats. And when I was running the O2 sensors without any spacers, I was getting that dreaded cat deficiency check engine light. So I've been trying out different spacers. Initially, I tried these spacers, these right angle spacers that have a mini cat inside. Unfortunately, those didn't work out because even though I didn't get the cat deficiency code, I was still getting getting a O2 sensor slow response code. So that kind of tells me that the spacers were too much. It took the O2 sensor out of the exhaust stream a little bit too much. So I went and tried different type of spacer, which are these 45 degree spacers that don't have any mini cats in them. Uh, unfortunately, I also still got that code for slow response. And so my third option before I do something a little bit more drastic is to try these spacers, these straight spacers. They're shorter. So they'll put the O2 sensor back into the exhaust stream a little bit more. Hopefully that is just the right amount of length to not trigger any codes. Also, a very common issue that a majority of people have when installing these spacers is don't get your O2 sensors mixed up. Make sure you label them, you know, bank one, bank two, so that you don't switch up the sensors. Another really cool thing is, and I'll leave uh, some more detailed photos to show it, but each plug for bank one and bank two is unique. So you should be able to identify which sensor is for which bank. You can see that without a spacer, how much the O2 sensor actually is in the exhaust stream. And you can see the one with the spacer, you know, you can't even see the O2 sensor in the exhaust stream at all. All right, both O2 sensors are in with their spacers. So let's, uh, let's do the fun thing of uh, putting this back on the car. Hey, by the way, I am buying one of my subscribers $100 worth of car parts once we reach 3,000, 5,000, and 10,000 subs. All you gotta do for a chance to win is be subscribed to the channel. So uh, make sure you do that if you haven't done it already. <music> So we got the car dropped, car is on. I just checked the codes and before I was having a uh, pending code for uh, slow sensors, just checked it right again. Didn't even let the car warm up, just immediately plugged in the OBD2 reader and the pending codes are gone. So that's a good sign for me right now. So it's, it's kind of early in the day on a weekend. Uh, I kind of want to take the car out and try to see if I can get the drive cycle to hopefully switch on the monitor. Uh, hopefully there's not too much traffic. I might have to abort it, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and take this car for a bit of a drive and see if it worked out. Okay, so it's the next day after like my fifth drive cycle. It has been a pain in the butt trying to get these monitors to switch over to ready. You know, driving like 55 miles per hour on the freeway for 15 minutes is, <laughs> is a lifetime. And uh, kind of dangerous here on California roads, but you gotta do it. Anyway, plugged in the uh, OBD2 reader. So let's see, uh, let's see if we got lucky today. Yes! Yes! Everything's ready! Oh hell yes! <laughs> oh god, finally! All right, and there you have it. We got our O2 sensor spacers to work. I'm super stoked. Now to recap, the size of the O2 sensor spacer is actually important. If it's too far away, then you're gonna get some codes. If it's too close, you're also gonna get some codes. So you gotta kind of play with the length. <laughs> 
hopefully you get it done in one shot. Anyway, I hope that video was useful. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We got some really cool things planned for this M3, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.